Hello everyone, this is David Biedel23 and welcome to the Mandragon's Cave. Today we are gonna be talking about my favorite One Piece saga so far. <laughs> it is one of those videos that I don't know when to do and uh, I think today is the correct timing. Uh, this is... Uh, a video that I'm recording a little bit on advance because this week I'm a little bit busy and uh, I'm gonna be drawing Polly because my favorite saga is Water 7 and consequently Enies Lobby. I think this is a double saga and uh, yeah so far in the full One Piece it is very difficult for me to decide but uh, I think I got to that point of uh, of knowing that because the things that I like in One Piece, because the fights, the powers, the mysticism, the secrets, the, 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 the everything, I think this is a saga that, in my opinion, for my taste in One Piece, uh, I think it has uh, everything. I, I love Water 7 because, first of all, the location, the location, the city of water, uh, how they move around the city, uh, how it's designed as well, uh, how everything is done there. I I love it. Uh, the there are many water seven and Enya's lobby. This I, I'm going to be talking all the time about this double saga. Okay, water seven Enya's lobby. For me, it's one big saga because we follow the same enemies, we follow the same story, and it doesn't finish in one island. So the story starts in the first island and continues and finishes in the second one. So, basically, I think it is a key saga in One Piece. Uh, the importance of Nico Robin in the story, the reveal of the CP0 and the investigation that they've been doing and the secret investigation they had uh, working for the government and all of these things. Uh, I think it is one of those uh, the, it, like like uh, espionage, secrecy, uh, who who tried to kill the Iceborg, uh, they are blaming Luffy, and then the Aqua Laguna is coming, they need to close everything, there's a timer there, they need to disappear, the Soan transformations of the CP9, impressive, crazy, the full, uh, the full chase in the train that, that Sanji is fighting first, and, and the, the reveal of the Rokushiki, the six techniques in the, in the CP9 and everything, I, I, I think that saga is fascinating for me. I, I've done before a couple of videos regarding to this. There is one video in particular very important for, for, uh, for this uh, kind of this video today that I'm gonna put here is the video about Iceborg and I, I draw Iceborg and I talk about Pluton and everything. I think I think this saga is hiding things that we don't comprehend yet. Uh, I think the mini story of Iceborg wanting to make Water 7 a floating island is because he's gonna be digging and, and kind of making it float as a ship and he's gonna be finding something down there. Uh, I think I mentioned it in my that video but I think it is perfect timing for now for mentioning it in this one because there is uh, Water 7, Water 7, number 7. Uh, for me as a story, story writer and storytelling person and, and someone who, who does stories as well, uh, for me that name is saying there's been seven Water 7s already. How long have we been have we been waiting for the, the with the Void Century stuff and the Nico Robin stuff? Eight hundred years. What if now, now that Iceberg is doing this, is the one hundred celebration to Water Seven to become Water Eight? Frankie is always naming his ships, his battleships himself with numbers, and 
Battle Frankie 35, Battle Frankie 36 that was in Water 7, Battle Frankie 37 that is after Water 7. So, what if Water 7, when Iceborg finishes the work, is gonna be Water 8? Is that a clue that every hundred years, more or less, every hundred years, Water 7 is sinking so much that you need to rebuild another one on top? And the original Water 7, that it will be water and that's it, the city of water, it's basically uh, from the void century. So we have that, we have, we may have that, that is when Nico Robin is kind of kidnapped uh, or, or kind of pushed to go with the government. Uh, so he's connecting to Nico Robin. So and Nico Robin it, it's the, the secrets of the world, the 800 void century, the, the 100 void century 800 years ago and all these things. So I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, Water 7, the original, Water, Water Zero, was from 800 years ago. And if Iceborg is digging to release the island and make it float, what if he's digging too deep, like the, like the dwarves in Moria, and he releases something that is be, be underneath Water 7, that is Pluton? What if he finds the mechanical ancient weapon that I always preach here on my channel uh, that you can understand following that previous video in uh, in here it will make sense for me that this will come to a full full circle because Iceborg is someone who has seen the blueprints that Tom gave them so Tom gave the blueprints to him uh, uh, and he knows how Pluton, the battleship, looks. And then he gave it to Frankie, that at that point was Cotty Flam, and he said, okay, change your name and use your Frankie name from now on. So all of those things, as, as a storyteller and as a character designer, as, a, as all the things that I do, I find it fascinating, fascinating that it's been so many years in the making. The concept of a spandam, the concept of CP9, I think is, is incredible and, and, and I love it. So let's do, we're gonna, we're doing Polly today. Yeah? Polly, I mentioned it a little bit on that video as well, is a character that I like so much because he could have been perfectly our, our shipwright because Luffy says to him, hey, come with us, if you want, you can come with us. And that is very nice. Let's recalculate a little bit here. Yeah, now we're in the middle. That is very nice. Polly, as soon as I saw him fighting and everything, I thought, oh my god, this guy, this guy must have a super cool fruit. But he doesn't have a fruit. <laughs> he is just fighting with... Uh, he's just fighting with ropes because he his work is to basically work in the ship right in the in the in in the shipyard and everything and, and he's one of the bosses boss the boss of the of the number one so he's the the, the the heir of iceborg so i guess when iceborg retires at some point he will take charge no and so nice to see how he uses the power and how he saves Luffy at some point when the Aqua Laguna is coming and Luffy is trapped and Nami and everyone and and, and with the with the with these ropes he saves them all Chopper as well and then he is involved he wants to go with Luffy go to any lobby to 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 try to fight Rochi and, and 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 you know defy the government and everything and protect Iceborg he wants to protect Iceborg all the time such a nice character. I love from Water Seven this uh, this 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 full concept of the mysticism, and uh, it it is obviously it's 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 a saga taking reference from Venice, from the town, from the masquerades, from the from the from the balls, from everything, and I love when Oda takes something from reality that all, every, all the time, eh? all the time he's doing this. But I love when he takes something from reality like that that it's so recognizable or such a such a famous city and he basically does the the, 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 the the magic of one piece you know the magic of one piece that you are able to see a normal city through his eyes and and, and the evolution of the of that city and the, 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 the how his imagination goes wild and uh, I love it 
I love it. I uh, uh, one of my favorite villains in One Piece as a group. Yeah, because I don't want to talk. I want to talk as as a group. So is the CP9. The CP9, the reveal of the Rokushiki, those six techniques when they can fly, pierce through bodies, they can kill anyone just with a punch and things like this. They have this um, level and, uh, that, uh, and remember when they arrive to Enya's lobby, when they meet the other half of the CP9 and then uh, uh, they being by one of the members uh, representing the owl that did his... Uh, uh, how it was called? How it was called the guy? No, I completely forgot. I got so, I got so excited that I completely forgot about the name. Uh, Fukuro. Fukuro uh, is there and he kicks all of them and he kind of measures the strengths that they have and he says, oh, you know, by the measure of the strengths, blah, 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 Ruchi is this, Kaku is that, Hajabura is that. And that is so cool that uh, a person can do something like that and because obviously uh, the fruit are well and everything, but uh, I... I love, I love that saga. The, 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 the trip, the trip from Water 7 to Enya's Lobby, it's something that I find fascinating. How Sanji releases Frankie, they are trying to reach Robin, and when he encounters Blueno, if you think about it, Sanji is the first one, the first one breaking the, the uh, Tekai, eh? Uh, when he's on the Blueno grabs the the train and he's holding the train together still, and then Sanji rolls like and kicks him on the side, and you can see on the face of Blueno how he almost breaks the Tekai there, and that's kind of the beginning of Sanji and this whole Germa evolution that he has undertaken with, when he was a kid and everything. And we understand why Sanji is so strong as well, but it is so. So cool. The fights there on the thing. We have Nero as well, one of those almost CP9 characters, completely forgotten by everyone, that I think I love the guy and how he is basically eliminated by Ruchi because he is not able to perform, basically. They, they ask him to do something, he killed these guys and he's not able to do it. He's not that strong. Uh, I love as well Frankie. Frankie's introduction. I think Water 7 Frankie is my favorite Frankie ever he is like a toolbox what he should be like like a toolbox he has all the the, the, the he spits nails he spits fire he can do Frankie Kentaur he can throw his 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 beard he can you know a thousand things the weapons left the straight right the the, the all you know all these things that he can do that we lost it a little bit now after the it's a little bit of a shame because and I always say it I always say it that now we don't see Frankie using all these gags that I love so much and I would love I would love it if, if Oda would uh, would would do I, I I have a nice video I have actually two nice videos one about Frankie and one about Lilith that I'm gonna put both of them here uh, one after another and you can see them. So in these videos basically I talk about Frankie coming a little bit back to his origins in Water 7 and uh, Lily applying green blood to him so he can have different powers. Uh, he can have as well Wapo Metal upgrade and do uh, other things uh, like more like he used to do. I think that's been a little bit forgotten and this is, you can't you can call it a theory or you can call it just hope, my hope of these things to happen because uh, it is one of those uh, one of those things that uh, it may never happen and we may keep the Frankie that we have now but as a reader of so many years, so many years, I would love it so much to be able to see a, a old school Frankie. Like I want him to spit fire. You know, because it helped so much in in Thriller Bark Saga to save them from the from Teleran, from the spider, the monkey spider. Uh, he basically saved himself and Robin and everything there because he was able to spit fire there. Where where is that? Where 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 do we have that? We don't have it anymore. And Oda, please, if you're watching this video, 
go to the drawing room and please do me a favor and do a Frankie toolbox again and, and I want to see Frankie using shipwright and, and things like that. I want to see Frankie building a stairs on the air like in Thriller Bark and, and, and punching someone on the face that is very tall. Like I want this fa this fancy, uh, this, this Frankie gags that, that, that I loved so much in, in Water 7. Don't take me wrong, I love already, uh, I love as well the Frankie from now, but to be honest, it has this melancholy, the new one, the, 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 the old one, it has this melancholy of, 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 of one piece that it reminds me uh, everything is possible with Frankie in, in, in that aspect and he can keep upgrading himself to do a little bit more and that's cool. Water 7 on his lobby as well, I love it because some, some one of us is kidnapped and everyone goes crazy. Was it her? Was it not? Sorrow is like, if it was her, we, we can't help her. We need to be against her. And then Sorrow is being strong there. He's kind of being leader in that aspect. He's saying, oh, Luffy, you can't be silly. You can't do this. You can't do that. And then we have the whole Usopp. Oh, my God. The Usopp evolution and the Usopp. This is, this is the, 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 the kid, the kid Usopp becoming adult or becoming aware of his own limitations like he blames himself as well for losing the money good then he's not in the meeting i mean i think luffy there you want the conflict obviously you want the conflict but luffy there should have said and nami should have said there hey usopp uh, we've been to the ship rise they've been to the they should have explained it be a little bit better because Usopp goes crazy there. He already knew the truth because when they come from SkyP and everything with the club outer man and all of that stuff, he knows that uh, Going Mary is dying and he needs to let him go. But he doesn't want to accept like a kid. He's attached to that feeling, attached to, attached to those moments, and he doesn't want to get that is so emotional and the whole Mary thing and at the end of his lobby and everything. Oh my god. I'm not ashamed of saying it, but I cried so much there. I cried so much there. Like, like I love how One Piece, how Oda is able to make all these things. If you see, I, I'm completely distracted by what I'm saying, and I'm not focusing much in poly, poor poly here. But you know, I love how how the Water Seven saga is handled, and there are beautiful, amazing sagas that they make you think they make you cry they make you excited they make you uh, you know love one piece more and more but but for me for my personal liking of one piece or what it is one piece if i would have to say to someone hey uh, can you do a, like a summer a summer can you summarize one piece for me uh, it will water seven in his lobby those that double saga for me will tick all the boxes of what it is one piece you have uh, superpowers that is the akuma no means with the old cp9 you have the group of the pirates the straw hat pirates and the tension in the crew as well that doesn't normally happen that's so nice so cool to see then you have all the aqua laguna happening so kind of all the like a fantastic town, like a fan in a fantasy world town with people with superpowers, uh, having to find the why of something and defe de defeat a massive guy that it's a monster. In this case, Ruchi Okaku, Ruchi particularly. And then the NS lobby point when the world is against you, that everyone and Luffy, man, moments, my favorite moments. If I start thinking about my favorite moments in One Piece, that at some point I will do a video about this, only about favorite moments. Uh, some of them, some of them are from these sagas. You know, the Usopp fight, the Usopp return, the Frankie presentation, the Frankie fight, the Gear Second, the Gear Second against Blue. No? My God, that was the, for me the most epic gear in the whole gear for Luffy. And then we have the Sohe King, Sohe King creation, 
uh, the Soccer King uh, reveal in the Tower of Justice to burn the flag for the world government, Usopp burning the flag of the world government, and then Zorro losing the, uh, the Yubashiri, the sword, uh, and then Sanji making this whole plot so all the ships can be crashed with the with the whirlpools and everything in, impressive in, amazing i love it and then we have uh, sanji's kick sanji's kick to habura on the face the whole funny story with habura and kaku following zorro and usopp handcuffed and everything in the fight chimney and gombi gombi running around and giving luffy the chance to have like a uh, this uh, uh, secret passage to go to the other side and everything, uh, Ruji's transformation, oh my god, the Rocco gun, that is kind of his, at his secret attack that leaves Luffy, that he can't even move, everyone shouting at Luffy so he can get up and everything to keep fighting, uh, Zorro getting lost the whole time in Water 7, and uh, there is a very, very funny, I know I always say, you know, the... Let's let's do a little bit of of this now. I always say that there is no the uh, how is it called the anime is not uh, well they, they always put extra things okay in 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 the story that they are not in the manga like in Water Seven there is a moment when Zorro disappears and he ends up he ends up taking care of three babies because these two kids lead him to a, a one point. And I know this is just a gag to extend a little bit the anime so the anime doesn't catch up with the with the manga. But that part of the <laughs> that part of the story I loved it so much because you could see you could see Zorro going around with with the kids and everything, Robin before uh, after she disappears. And when, this is when we are back to Water Seven. Uh, Robin sees him and he's like with oh so cute face and everything all these all these funny moments and uh, I, I love it I, I love it it's one of those sagas that uh, you know for me define the concept of One Piece that it has a little bit of everything let's do the face here it has a little bit of everything for me and it is it is so cool so nice let's do Polly's glasses there. I love the, the concept of Polly as well. Eh? The concept of Polly that I explained in the other video and how he is kind of uh, not used by the iceberg, but uh, he he helps iceberg to be able to to buy time so other things can happen in the story and uh, and um, he can divert the, 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 the illusion of, of, of the blueprints to someone else to kind of win time with the Aqua Laguna and everything, to kind of keep all of them there in the Aqua Laguna so they can't escape and, and all of these things. Iceberg is a very, very clever man. Uh, we see all... Uh, my massive theory in the channel about the ancient weapons that I, I talk all the time about this is basically because Iceberg. There is this moment that I always say, there is this moment in the story when he is talking to Robin and he says, oh, you know, I'm not going to give you the blueprints ever. Uh, the blueprints were created uh, ages ago to protect us, to protect everyone from people like you. Like if someone like you comes and wants to revive the weapons and attack uh, everyone, we, uh, the government created this. 800 years ago to be able to to be able to fight back so the, from that moment when he says that i started to think about the i started to think about the theory of the mechanical ancient weapons and i said uh, uh, yeah he said that and i'm gonna take it for granted that there are not only three weapons or the three original weapons i'm gonna put a playlist and a very nice playlist here with all the videos more or less that I've done related to the ancient, the mechanical ancient weapons and, and why and how do I think uh, the, the, what do I think they are and how do I think are going to be used uh, going forward in the story and who's going to have it and blah, blah 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 so you can find all that info there in the 
in, in that playlist. But uh, basically, uh, I think what Iceborg does there is giving us a super clue to understand a little bit beyond of what it is One Piece and what it is the government and the darkness of the government. I think the darkness of the government is revealed there when, when they have someone like Rucci working for them that they are assassin and he only wants to kill. Oh, I'm here because I'm able to kill whoever I want, whenever I want. And uh, there is when the corruption of the world government in One Piece, it is uh, basically shown. And it's kind of setting up the whole mood for the story. Uh, we have as well flashbacks, you know, with the Robin story as well and everything. And uh, it is uh, very interesting. The creation of the Sony in that saga is fascinating. The, the type of ship, the aquarium inside, the slides, I, I love it. I love it. So here, feel, feel free to share in the comments which one is your favorite saga, if you think like me, or if you have another saga, maybe your favorite saga is Marineford, because there we had the fights, and we have all the pirates fighting, and we had the tension with with Luffy and everyone, or maybe your favorite saga is um, uh, Thriller Bark, because we had the Brook introduction, and the zombies and everything, and you really like zombies. I would love to know uh, which one is the one that you love the most. Uh, or the one for you that represents more One Piece and we can talk about it in the comments and I would love to engage in conversation and, and see uh, and see what's your opinion and what is your liking about 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 One Piece because I I love I love to see uh, I love to see what other people uh, like from One Piece uh, like your favorite character, for example, that they posted the other day as well, and things like this. I, I love to see that. Okay. I think I made one finger extra there, because I'm so excited talking about uh, talking about Water 7 and his lobby that I, I think I made one extra finger. But it is okay. It is okay. Polly, I think, can keep smoking his cigars and, and, and working with the ropes with one finger extra. That's okay. That is okay. I want you three, four. In this one, yeah, we have four. Okay, and the fingers are very weird because they are like this. They have two straight and the other one uh, thing. And if you see the reference for the drawing, when it's this introduction and everything, it is a little bit, uh, to be honest, uh, ugly hands there at that moment. To be a, to be a person who works with the hands, like Polly, it's a little bit. <laughs> Ugly ones there, but it's okay. Let's do these flaming things that he has here that I don't know how or what is the purpose of this in the design. Normally Oda, when he does a character design, every single bit of it, it has a reason to be. But this particular design for the sleeves on the coat, on this kind of jacket, <laughs> makes no sense. Funnily enough, he has this kind of uh, this kind of uh, belt here, very very similar to what Bellamy, my favorite character, has. That is very nice too. This kind of just gonna put the boots here. A little rainbow here, so the weather is approving my liking for for my favorite season, my favorite saga of One Piece. It's saying, okay, you like that saga? The weather approves. <laughs> Something like this. He has these lines there because it's a very pulled up trouser, so that's why it's representing the, the lines like that. But it's looking nice, it's looking nice. Let's do the circles. We have a small one. And then there is a little bigger one. I don't think I'm gonna do exactly how many we have, to be honest. Just gonna do a couple. There. And then there is a bigger one. So 
something like this and another one thinner there on top and then the very very last one it goes almost to the top yeah, he has that shirt tucked in t-shirt tucked in there but yeah something like this I think it will do for my poly design normally I talk about the character that I'm drawing, but here, as I said, this we are talking about my favorite One Piece saga. And uh, yeah, I can't talk only about Polly. This is about uh, Pipli Lulu, his, his colleague that he has the hair that he, 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 is, he has like, like a horn there and he touches it and it's like, it's like hair going morning hair and he presses it mech, and it goes mock on the mustache or on an arm of someone else. That is very funny. Uh, then we have Tolstein as well, the super strong guy that man, when they are protecting Iceborg, when they are protecting Iceborg in the room and they are sitting and we don't know who is the enemy yet. And then someone is approaching and Tolstein is going there like, oh my God, I'm the strong. And they wreck him on the floor like crazy and he's supposed to be the strong guy man <laughs> that is brutally brutally epic let's close this smoke from the cigar like this okay Oda always leave it open because in the manga it creates a nice design so you can paint around it and make it dark uh, he makes it with the text as well in the background and everything but we we will close it because we are not painting or drawing any kind of uh, background. But yeah, uh, let's do it here some. This trusser is pulling a little bit up as well here like this. And yeah, nice and easy, nice and easy. This character, very nice. I love it. Start with the blues. It's a lot of blue here in his character. We do two passes, this one first, and then a, a little bit darker color, and when we paint with the black as well. The legs, I did, the, the sleeves are kind of purpley, purpley color, a little bit purple. Okay. I would have done the paint, the color with the a sketch with blue, but with Polly, what happens is that the, the shirt, the t-shirt that he's wearing is yellow. So it would have ended up being green with the, you know, the, when you mix the colors, uh, this, the mix of these two colors, it's, it's, um, it's going to be green. And I didn't want the greens around him, to be honest. So that's why I decided to go for a just plain black to do the sketch this time. But that's fine. That's fine. The boots are black. So the, blue, the boots, I will uh, paint them in a second with the, with the fine liner, the 0 0.2 uniball that I'm using, okay? Like, let's do it now so we don't forget. Let's do it now and we don't forget. So yeah, please feel free to tell me in the comments which one is your favorite saga and why. And if there's any kind of key moments, like I said, from, from my liking, uh, it is your favorite. Like, oh my god, I like this saga because, I don't know, year second and GR third as well and uh, then oh no my favorite is because GR5 I put it in the comments let's talk about it and let's open a little bit of discussion about it and uh, yeah uh, Polly has this kind of snow glasses when you go to, to ski or something I've never been but they have like these these kind of tones and they are yellowish we'll paint it in a moment let's do uh, uh, orange I think it is orange yeah orange there. Something weird is going on on my neck here. Now, I done this shade in there and it looked a little bit weird, but I think with these two lines we added, we fix it. Uh, yeah, it's sharpen a little bit to make his hair because he's blondy guy. Okay. As you have seen, I have said like a thousand moments from these two sagas that I love. I, I'm very passionate about it. Maybe you can feel it even in my voice when I talk about this saga. Uh, when I talk about the powers shown in this in this super cool saga. And uh, yeah, I love it. I, I love it. And 
I have this kind of melancholy always for all, for the uh, for the old uh, the pre time skip uh, designs from the pre time skip sagas and everything and. Uh, I don't know, maybe you like more designs from now, but maybe how I grew up with, with the older designs. Uh, it shocks me more when something happens and uh, uh, the moments as well, they shocked me more before, uh, the, before the time skip. It is more impactful for me, for my, for my liking. So let's add some color as well to the face. Okay, it's the neck as well, and the chest. We paint the arm, we don't forget the arms. And the mutation of this other arm with one extra finger. Okay. The sun, I think, went away a little bit now. And it's full of cigars, like a smoker, really bad habit. But what we need to do? Yes, we just make the drawing here for him, and it is what it is. What purple are we gonna use? We need dark purple. I'm gonna make may use the normal one and add it a little bit of this redness, yeah, a, little, a little bit of red and a little bit of purple to make it dark, and then we'll paint it in black. Yeah, and it gave us this kind of more pastel dark that we want. This red, brown red that they have, it's a pretty weird color. This I wouldn't actually know how to say the, the, the actual color of this. Okay. And I think this is purple as well, but I'm gonna do it black for just for the sake of having a contrast, a little bit of contrast in the design. Okay, something like this. Something like this is looking very nice so far. Okay, the back is there. The, the blue needs to be darker. Yeah, what do you think? The blue needs to be darker, and the glasses. This is no glasses need to be orange as normal. We'll do as well the mouth. They're a little bit pinky because that is teeth, and this is kind of tongue there, and then the cigar. The cigars I may do them a little bit darker as well in a second, but it is looking very, very nice, very, very nice. I like it. Okay. The perspective of Zorro there uh, in the story, I love it how everyone is more, let's say, childish or more forgiving, and Zorro stands his ground and says, with Nico Robin, this is what we're gonna do, and with Usopp, this is what we're gonna do, because we are not playing to be pirates, we are pirates, and this is very serious, we could die any moment, uh, as you have seen during the whole saga. So basically, they, uh, they, they are upset with Zorro there, because saying those comments, but all of it is true, and... Uh, you see the evolution. So there is a click in that saga where all of them, not only Usopp, all of them mature in a way that they realize, since the Aogiji encounter a little bit before, they realize uh, they can die any moment. And this is something that Luffy says while fighting Blueno. When he's fighting Blueno, Luffy uh, is saying, oh, since we met, since I met the ice guy, since I met the ice guy, I realized that I wasn't strong enough to protect my crew and we could die any time, so I had to pump up my game. And we never see because all of this is off screen, and uh, that is the surprise, and that is a very nice surprise. You can say, Oh, how did he get the power up? Well, he was, I guess, training every day in his free time or on his own time, whatever, uh, while traveling as well. And uh, Sometimes you want to know, but in this case, for me, I, I didn't mind. It didn't mind for me. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. I don't mind when I, when he was turning for this, but it's too cool. And uh, yeah, he pumps up his game, and uh, he becomes so strong with the gear and everything, pumping his heart and pumping his attention and the blood and everything. And uh, it is uh, something new that I have never seen in One Piece. 
and it calls it called my attention so much that I wanted to know more and to learn more about uh, about the gears and everything. Uh, I think at the moment it is going very very crazy with the gears. Uh, I want to see. I want to see uh, a cartoony Luffy, yes, but uh, I want to see... I don't know if we are going to ever see like a serious fight from now on with Luffy. I'm a little bit expecting, uh, expectating here to see what's going to happen with him and what are we going to see. Uh, because to be honest, I, I like the GR5, but it is so strong that I think it needs to be like a, they need to contrarrest somehow with another power uh, so yeah because it has no limits and he's not having difficulties apart from this drawback with the getting old while he fights and all these things I don't see uh, a drawback that is gonna slow him down I mean you tell me who is gonna be fighting Luffy now who is going to be fighting Luffy now that is going to be able to defeat him? That people that we know. I, I don't even think, you know, I, I think Big Mom is going to be dragged to Elbaf and everything, but uh, she's not a rival anymore. After defeating Kaido and everything, after GR5, after fighting Ruchi, Naked, it's not... Big Mom is not a rival anymore for, for GR5, I think. So... I have theories about Big Mom that I, I, I you can check in my channel as well. They are not related for it, for this, so I'm not pinging it here. Uh, you can check it in the channel and, and, and connections. What what's going to happen with that? But uh, yeah, basically, I think she's going to end up in Elbaf, and uh, she's not going to be the main antagonist there. But she's going to be defeated by Usopp, by God Usopp. Uh, and I explain all these things in her video and in Usopp videos and everything and how Usopp is going to be developing but not related to this theory so I don't need to go further in this but uh, to be honest uh, Luffy grew so much in Water 7 and in Enya's lobby that now is kind of as well uh, I'm curious about the impotence that he should have had being in Iceborg Rome when when he was basically defeated by Ruchi there and Zorro as well, and he didn't reveal the second gear there. Uh, well, I I know that he Ruchi kicked him out of the of the frame and he kicked him out of the building, and uh, then he couldn't basically come back because he got trapped in between the buildings. Nami was very upset. Everyone. They weren't giving their hundred percent because they have they had these doubts. Even Luffy, they had these doubts about. Mm, I don't believe Robin is doing any of these bad things, but am I am I true to what is happening? So I think yeah. And as soon as Nami's role, there is very important in that part because Nami is the one who talked with Iceborg, and she realizes okay, and then she says oh. Now that we know the truth, nothing can stop us. So I'm gonna go and find Luffy. Uh, Nami's role it is very very important in that part of the story, even if she's not fighting in Water Seven. And uh, oh, a moment that I forgot, completely forgot about it while talking about all of these things. The Frankie House. First of all, when Usopp goes there, and second of all. When the four guys go there to kick their asses and destroy the full Frankie house, that is epic. And the Frankie fight with Galela and uh, and Luffy in uh, in the shipyard, man, that is so cool. That is so cool. That fight. That is so cool. One of my, I will say, top moments for me is when. Uh, that I miss that so much. When uh, when CP9 goes to the office under the bridge, where Frankie has his office, and his Frankie is sheltering there, the going Mary and Usopp, and they are talking about fixing the Mary, blah 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 blah, and then the CP9 shows up, and Mosu and Kiwi they are kicked out of the frame as well. They are flying all over the place. Frankie gets upset. And Frankie 
That's my favorite thing. Frankie grabs Blueno like this on the face and whoop, he pulls him up. Like, Blueno, do you forget who am I <laughs> here in Water 7? That I loved that moment, like the power. Like, Frankie is like, whoa, Frankie, you are epic. Let's not forget to do the a little bit of moustache that he has. Tick, 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 tick. There. The eyes, like this. Okay, it's looking nice. So yeah, that moment with Frankie, it is was dangerous. Because so far there we know that Frankie is very, very dangerous there. And when he does that, Man, that is so cool. Uh, I talk a lot about Frankie in my videos as well, and uh, he he's disappeared for a little bit in the Water 7 saga because he travels to, I think it's Sam Poplar, and in Sam Poplar he made a deal with someone from the black market to buy wood from the Adam tree, and uh, this... Uh, this uh, this deal end up good for the straw hats because they end up having the sunny for them, etc., etc. Okay, uh, I, I talk about this in my video about the man marked by flames that I think is Scope Gaban from Rogers Crew. I think uh, I'm gonna put it here so you can watch it as well. Uh, the guy fights with two axes and that may be connected at him being some sort of lumberjack, and I think that's the guy from the black market living in Elbaf, uh, that Frankie made the deal and bought the the tree. I think the tree is super strong and not many people can cut anything from the tree. And uh, I think Scoper Gaban being with Roger Crew and everything is so strong that he's one of those few that can cut the tree and make some money from it. And uh, we will come to a full circle there. If Gaban is there and Gaban recognizes Frankie because whatever you know, Frankie's mentor, um, Tom, he made the Oro Jackson as well. So it will make sense. It will make sense if those things are connected there somehow. I check out that video about uh, the man buried by flames and, and um, you will see how the story goes there, I think, how the story goes there and, and, and why and who is connected to that man. This, I think, is been one of my favorite videos to do. Uh, I always enjoy One Piece conversation a lot, but talking about my favorite saga and my favorite moments of One Piece uh, from the saga, I think is top, top uh, uh, of uh, one of, you know one of my favorite moments of of, of the channel. Just talking about about. Um, about this. I wanted to do this video for so long and it's good that we are in a break or almost finishing the break uh, or almost out of the break now because I said this video came out a little bit. I recorded it. It's, it's coming up now today but I recorded it uh, last week. Uh, so I'm kind of... Uh, this is before before reading 11-12. I don't think the episode so far haven't come out yet while I'm recording, maybe the time I'm posting it, it is already out. Uh, but it is so nice to talk about Water 7 Saga and then it's Lobby Saga. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pin here if I can, if not in the show more sections, a super cool video about Rob Rochier I have. And how do I think that he is gonna end up being taken over by the fruit? by the end of Egghead or in the next saga. But I think his future is for us, the readers, to see him uh, taken over by the by the Soan fruit, by the Leopard fruit, and transform into one of those impel down jailers thingy. I had a hilarious drawing I've done of him in, in, in that uh, shape that I think you will enjoy a lot. Uh, I've done a very uh, cartoony poly, today and 
Yeah, I will take a nice picture to, to share it as well on social media and everything, so you can see it nice and nice. And uh, yeah, I think we are done for today. It was such a pleasure, such a nice video talking about uh, Water 7 and Ineos Lobby, all the characters in it, all my favorite moments from the series. Probably I missed some moments as well from the story, uh, you know, Usopp related or, or all of these things. Uh, you know, the Garp moment at the very end as well is very nice when we reveal all the info about Dragon, etc, etc. It's very cool. The, 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 the Robin, I wanna leave. Ikite, I wanna leave. And crying and everything, man. The stand, the, the epic stand. The jump with the Rocket Man as well. Uh, Kokoro <laughs> being a mermaid and everyone forgetting about her later in the, in the, in the Gyojin sagas and everything. Uh, I... Yeah, if, if you noticed it, I love Water 7 in his lobby and uh, I don't get tired of it. And uh, I can't wait to see more info about ancient weapons that it's related to that saga, mechanical ancient weapons related to that saga as well. And um, yeah, <sighs> I think we finished for today. Okay, let's sign. This is David. Biadel. 23, David Viadra 23, you can say it as you want, and this is the Mandragon's Cave. Feel free to share this video with your Nakamas, with your family, with your friends, with everyone. Like it, subscribe, comment, tell me in the comments your favorite saga, tell me in your comments your favorite moment from your favorite saga as well. And your opinion, please, about Water 7 and Inez Lobby and what happens there. Uh, it is very... Very important for me to know that, <laughs> it's very nice, because I have my strong feelings about, uh, about the saga, as you have seen, and I would love to see what's your opinion as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!